Hey y'all and welcome back to another episode of Amber's Aspect. I'm Amber Nicole. If you're new here, my channel is all about lifestyle and mom life and army life and basically my aspect of things. So thanks for coming. This week we're going to be talking about mom life. I'm going to talk about what it's like, how my life's changed, my life with Addy, um, mommy shamers, taking care of yourself because that's super important. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna be answering all the questions that you guys ask me on social media. So let's get started. And yes, Addy will be making a special appearance in the video. Just right now, I'm trying to let her take a nap. I literally went to go get water and she saw me in. Mom life. She's okay, I swear. She's fed, she's changed, she's clean, she's just She's got a baby Einstein movie. She's got her toys. She's fine. She's just obsessed with me. I was gonna do this in the living room, but like I cannot be in there because all she'll want is just me to hold her. And I just, uh, right now, I can't. Like she's really good about entertaining herself in the playpen, but if I'm in the room, like all hell breaks loose. So mom life, ugh, what's it like? I can't even describe it. Um. It's definitely different than the life that I used to have. It has so many ups and downs. It's so rewarding. It's so challenging. I mean, I know she sounds pretty annoying right now. I mean, she is, but <laughs> like I said, it's so rewarding. It's such an amazing, beautiful experience. And I know I sound super corny, but there's just some feeling you get when you hold your baby in your arms for the first time like carrying them for nine months and then giving birth to them and it's like you created this thing you and your spouse created this little person and it's just the most amazing feeling in the world I hope that everybody can experience the feeling of being a mother because it's just amazing and I would not change my life not one bit. I mean, there's a lot of ups and downs. Like, <laughs> there's many sleepless nights. There's times where you just want to sit in a corner and cry because Lord knows I have when <laughs> I have gone on night four of this kid waking up and I have not gotten any sleep and I've only had like two hours of sleep every night and you just want to sit there and cry. Don't worry, you're not alone. We've all done it. I know I have. I have sat next to Addie's crib and just cried because I don't know what to do. I've been around babies. I had an idea of what babies were like, but you don't know till you are. Like, you don't know what motherhood is like till you are like actually put in the situation. I would do absolutely anything for her. I would literally do whatever it took to take care of her, to protect her. I anything in the world. My ultimate fear right now is something happening to my baby girl. Like, it's, <laughs> if something ever happened to her, I honestly don't know what I would do. You'd probably have to put me in like a mental institution because I genuinely don't know what I would do with myself. Adeline doesn't define me, but also at the same time, I genuinely don't know what I would do without her because she is my baby. She's my baby and I love her. So that's just me trying to explain like the love that I have for that little girl. Like I love her so much. I love our bond. There's just something about a mother daughter bond that is incredible and um, she's my only one. So right now it's just me and her and she's my little bestie. Being a mommy is honestly my greatest accomplishment. When somebody compliments me on being a mom, when somebody says, Oh my gosh, you're such a great mom. It is honestly the best compliment ever. Like, it's amazing because you're raising this person. You're taking care of this person. You are molding them. And when somebody compliments you on that, like, it's such a good feeling. And I absolutely, I, I love it. I love it. Let's talk about the ups and the downs. Sometimes mommies don't like to talk about the downs because sometimes moms feel embarrassed about the downs, if that makes sense. I feel like moms sometimes don't want to talk about like their low points of being a mom because, you know, everybody expects motherhood to be like this like amazing thing. I mean, while it is, it's so hard. And sometimes you can be at an ultimate low and you just, 
you know, your emotions are high and everything and sometimes like you're supposed to just love this baby unconditionally but at the same time they're like literally driving you up the wall. It's okay. Being a mom or being a parent is hard. It is hard. You are shaping and molding a little person, okay? Of course it's hard. You are raising a person to be somebody one day. You know what I mean? So if that doesn't already stress you out enough, like, come on, y'all. Like, what I'm trying to say is, moms, talk about your lows. Just talk about it because, moms, it's okay if you have low points of motherhood because it happens to all of us, you know? And yes, I only have one, but at the same time, I get it. Moms, just talk about it. Just talk about what goes on. Because when I talk about it with my friends, when I'm like, oh my God, Adeline was literally just like driving me up the wall today and I literally don't know what to do with her. And they'll share, you know, oh my God, my kid this, my kid that, this and that. It makes me feel better and then I also feel like it makes them feel better because we've all been through it, we all understand, so it happens, you know? Babies will be babies and you are not a bad mom. It's just sometimes it can get overwhelming and it can get tiring and of course, you know, you may lose your cool at times because maybe you had just 30 minutes of sleep last night. That has happened to me. I had literally lost my cool one time because I had only had maybe about 20 to 30 minutes of sleep the night before. And it was when Addie was teething and she just wouldn't go to sleep. I tried everything. I fed her. I gave her another bath. I gave her medicine. I rocked her to sleep. I just, nothing was working. It's moments like that where you feel defeated and you feel like maybe you're not doing enough for your baby and take it from me don't feel that way I know I felt that way I know there have been many nights where I just feel defeated I know there have been days where I feel like I'm not doing enough I've felt that I wasn't good enough and that I wasn't doing it right and you know sometimes you just got to talk yourself out of that. I'm lucky to have my mom and my sister and other moms. When I'm in those moments, I'll either call my mom or I'll call my sister or I'll talk to another friend that has had babies who has been in my situation before. And I turn to them because they've been through it and they know what it's like and I'm able to get that advice from them. So Having like a little mommy community is great because you can all talk about it. You can all say, oh yeah, that's happened or yeah, this has happened. It really does help. Not only it helps you be more confident as a mom, just talking to another adult just helps. Like, you know, and moms, if somebody asks you for advice about anything like, oh my God, my kid's sick, what should I do? Or um, they're showing these symptoms, yada, yada, yada. Don't belittle them. Don't be like, how did you not know that? You know what I mean? Don't do that because then they're going to feel worse about themselves. Just, you know, if they ask you something, if they say, um, what did you do with your baby? Things like that. If they ask you that, don't answer them like, are you stupid or something? No, don't do that because then you just make them feel bad about themselves and you make them question themselves as a mother. You're like not helping anybody when you act that way. So yeah, lots of ups, lots of downs, but overall, it's an amazing experience. I honestly would not change it for the world. Side note, my favorite snack of all time are these little things right here. Let's talk about mommy shamers. If you are a mommy shamer and you judge other moms based off of stupid things like formula versus breast milk or I don't know something stupid like that go slap yourself in the face because that's so dumb like the only way I'm gonna judge another mom is if their child is an actual like physical or emotional danger that's the only way I'm gonna judge that mom and be like um girl you're a bad mom like you need to get your life together and take care of your kid it's the only way I'm gonna judge somebody if you can see 
that that child is taken care of, if they are fed, if they're clean, if they are anything. You know what I mean? Like, why would you judge them? I don't understand. Just mind your business. I don't get why people just can't do that. At the end of the day, it's their baby. It is not your right to go and judge them. Like I said, if they are taken care of, then why are you going to go and make that mom feel bad about themselves? Like, that's just not cool. <laughs> like, it's not cool. And if you are a mommy shamer, I think you need to reevaluate your um, life, <laughs> okay? Because honestly, who has time to go around saying, why are you giving your baby formula over breast milk? Like, don't do that. Don't do that, okay? I've never encountered a mommy shamer. I kind of hope I do one day, because <laughs> let me tell you what. I'm just gonna go off like, oh my god. It's gonna be bad. So, I will say this. While I do not agree with anti-vaxxers, because I think that might come off as me mommy shaming them, you know, because they genuinely feel like they're protecting their kid. I'm not going to get into that right now, but at the end of the day, that is their kid. As long as you stay away from my kid, <laughs> we're cool. Like, as long as you go mind your business away from my, me and my kids, and as long as you just are in your own little bubble, hey, nothing I can do about it, right? I mean, I'm going to be over here minding my own business. But at the end of the day, vaccinate your kids. <laughs> so the next thing I wanna talk about is taking care of yourself. It is so important for you to take care of yourself, moms. So important for you guys to take the time to just do a little me time. Now, I know it sounds selfish. I know some moms might think like, oh my God, my world revolves around my baby. Like how can I take any time for myself when my life is all about my kids? While that's okay, it really is, at the end of the day, sometimes you need to make yourself feel good too because I read in a post somewhere, you were a person before you became a mom. And we can't forget who that person is. While being a mom is a major part of my life, I'm not gonna say that it defines me. Obviously, when Adeline grows up and she goes to college or she leaves the house, I have to figure out what to do with my life. And that's why it's important to have your own little hobbies, your own like little things that you do for yourself. Like for me, for example, I love to do my makeup and I love to do my hair. I love to get ready. I do that for me. I don't do it to impress my husband. I mean, yes, I love his compliments and all, but I get ready, do my makeup, get dressed up for me, not for anybody else. I love it. Like makeup has kind of turned into like a hobby for me. I'm not like a makeup artist or anything. But I love doing makeup. I love going to Ulta. I love going to Sephora. I love going to the store and like picking things out. I could totally buy them everything I need online, but they're going to the actual store makes me feel some type of way. And then I just started the vlog and I absolutely love this. It has become a hobby for me, so I hope to continue it. And it's just things like this that I'm doing to make myself feel good and make myself happy. I recently just started focusing on like my skincare routine. I didn't have the best skincare routine. I thought I did, but <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. And it's just one of those things that is making me happy because being comfortable in your own skin just does wonders for you, like honestly. You need to take care of yourself in order to take care of your babies. If you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not happy, if you are just 100% focused on the babies and you have neglected yourself and you know you're not happy you're not eating well you're just not happy but you're trying to do everything for your kids how do you think that's it's not gonna work I'm not saying to go to the spa every weekend I'm not saying to go spend thousands of dollars on yourself like I mean I'm not saying to do that simply taking a bubble bath at nighttime with a glass of wine or getting a better facial routine going on for you. Little things like that, that just make yourself feel better, you know? When you start realizing like, you know what? I need to take a minute to myself. You will feel like so much better. And I promise you, it's not being selfish. It's important. It really is important that you 
take care of your physical health, your mental health. It's just so important and I can't stress it enough. Just try it. You know, I'm not an expert. I'm just here giving my opinion. <laughs> um, you don't have to listen to me, but if there's anything I think you should take from this video is take care of yourself too. And I promise you the outcome will be great. Okay. So now let's talk about how motherhood changed me as a person. Motherhood 100% changed my outlook on life, my attitude, my everything. Being a mom has 100% made me a better person, I think. I am not the same person I was a few years ago. And I'm not saying that I was a bad person, but I wasn't the best person. It was all about me, me, me. The second that I held my daughter in my arms, my life changed. Adeline made me a better person. I realized as I'm holding my daughter in my arms, I thought to myself, who do I want to be for Adeline? I had to change myself and I had to work on myself in order for Adeline to have somebody to look up to, in order for Adeline to mimic somebody. You know, if she is around me every single day, if she sees how I interact with people, if she sees how I treat people, then she's gonna go and treat people the same way I'm treating people. And if I'm treating people poorly, if I'm just being a bad person, what do you think she's gonna be like? You know what I mean? When I'm faced with tough situations, I think about how do I want my daughter to handle a situation like this if she's ever in one. That really helps me. I love the person I am today. You know, I'm not perfect nobody's perfect okay I'm not perfect I am confident that if my daughter was to mimic my actions right now I'd be happy and I'd be okay so now I'm gonna answer some of the questions that y'all gave me on social media okay let me just yeah you like that <laughs> question one tell us about your labor experience y'all my labor story is super funny so it's really long but long story short my water broke at the P.F. Chang's in El Paso, so yeah, there's that. My husband was at ALC, so I was with my family back in El Paso, and my water broke at P.F. Chang's. So we get to the hospital, and I'm just chilling, you know. I'm just like, oh, okay, I had already like asked for the drugs. They gave me like this little pill, and then they gave me the IV drug, and then the last drug they were gonna give me was the epidural. So I was chilling, you know, I wasn't in any pain yet, and it was already about midnight, and my mom went back home to get the rest of the stuff, and then when she was gone is when my contractions started. Oh my god. Contractions are the absolute worst. If you have had a baby without any drugs, I give you all the credit in the world because it's so painful worst pain i've ever experienced in my life so my mom comes back and i'm still having contractions and she's like well, where's your epidural and i was like they can only give me this drug right now they're gonna give me the epidural later and my mom's like um no we need the epidural so freddie comes in that was the doctor that gave me my epidural he was amazing he was great after having about four and a half hours of contractions that epidural was like the most amazing thing in the world let me tell you what it was like an instant pain reliever oh my god it was so amazing so i got my epidural around 5 a.m and then after that i mean i was up all night so I like i was exhausted and they were like okay well you can go to sleep now if you want um they said we're gonna come in and check on you but i was only about four centimeters dilated and they were like, we're gonna come in and check on you, make sure the baby's heartbeat is okay, make sure everything is okay. And I was like, okay, cool. So the only reason I was waking up was because the, the nurses would come and shift me because Adeline would move. So they would come and shift me so they can hear Addie's heartbeat better. That was the only reason I was waking up. Like my mom fell asleep and I was asleep. And yeah, it, that epidural just like knocked me out. Like it was so good. They come in like an hour later, I meet the new nurses, I meet the doctor that's going to deliver the baby, and then it's about 8 already. They sit me up and they put like my legs up like this. So I'm like sitting up like, so I'm like sitting up like this and I have my legs up. And the doctor was like, we're going to come back in and check at around 9-ish. He was like, we want you to be 
fully dilated. We don't want you to be pushing for a long time, so we're just gonna keep waiting this out. And I was like, okay. I fall back asleep. So like an hour goes by and my mom's already up at this time. She like went into the bathroom and I'm like kind of waking up, but you know, I'm kind of just like groggy and my mom comes out and then all of a sudden the monitor for Addie's heartbeat like just goes off. And so it was like my background noise like the entire night. All I would hear is like doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. and then all of a sudden it just stopped. So like I kind of opened my eyes and then my mom, she sees the screen too and she's like, why isn't the screen on? And I was like, I don't know, I heard it turn off too. So we call the nurse in and the nurse comes in and she was like, um, we were like, we don't know what happened and it just turned off. And she was like, hmm, that's weird. So she turns back on. Um, she was like, I'm gonna see how far you're dilated. And I was like, okay. So like, I remember I'm sitting up. She lifts the sheet and she checks like with her hand. And then she's like, oh my God. She's like, you're crowning. And I'm like, like, remember, I'm like super groggy, right? And I'm just like laying there and she's checking me and I'm just like chilling. And then she's like, you're crowning. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, Excuse me, what's going on? And she like looks and she's like, oh my God. And so my mom looks and my mom's like, oh my God, Amber, I see the head. And I'm like, what? So she's like, call the doctor, call him right now. So she's like screaming for the doctor. And so... I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Everything's happening so fast at this moment. Like it literally feels like it happened like that. And she's screaming for the doctor and another nurse comes in and she's like, give me gloves, give me gloves. So like gloves are being thrown and then the doctor rushes in, the lights flick on. So the two nurses pull my legs back and they're like, okay, push. And I literally push like twice and she came right out. I couldn't believe how fast it happened. Oh my God, it was crazy. I love telling my labor story. Like it was, it's just so funny. Second question, what do you do when you're sick? I know you're lonely and hubby works. So when I'm sick, I kind of just suck it up. Um, I uh, have my few medicines that I like to take when I'm sick. I like to take Theraflu, Dayquil, and Tylenol or Advil. There have been times where I just cannot do it and Eric kind of takes over. As far as um, being lonely, um, I'm not really lonely, but I have really good friends here. So if I absolutely like could not take care of Addie and dad couldn't take care of her either, I know one of my friends would 100% be like, hey, why don't I take her for like an hour or so? I'm really blessed to have them too. Third question, what are some different activities that you do with your daughter? now that she is walking she is starting to like get into things more and wanting to be out more so i'm still learning this i'm still trying to figure out what to do with her but what has worked for her is literally just out anywhere um if she's out and walking she's great she's still not at the age where she understands like what's going on so i'm still learning on different activities i can do with Addie. But um, as she gets older, I'll definitely have more answers. Anywhere like they have lots of space to like walk around and just like run around. I think those are good too. Ooh, water. So if you have like a water hose nearby, go see if you can find like one of those sprinkler attachments. I think that would be a winner. Or anything to do with water, I think will be awesome. So the next question, different snacks that I give Addie. Y'all, snacks are awesome, and I am always stacked on snacks. Puffs are her favorite. These things are freaking awesome. That little girl can, like, just shove her whole mouth with puffs, but they all dissolve, and it, they're awesome. I also found this, like, little thing. This, like, little container. I put the puffs in here, and she has to, like, she can go grab them herself, but, like, it has this, like, thing right here. So it takes her a minute to like put her little chubby hand in here and like take one out. So this thing entertains her too. So yeah, this thing's awesome. Puffs are awesome. Lately, Addie has really been loving these go-go squeeze things. Addie really likes these. So she really likes granola bars. Um, these are Sunny Days snack bars. This is strawberry, but these are organic for sure teether wheels she is still teething she's getting her molars now 
So these teether wheels are awesome and she loves them. And they also feel super good on her gums. So I would definitely recommend teether wheels. The last snack that I like to give her are goldfish. Yeah, she really likes these too. These are mainly the snacks that I give her and they keep her quiet for like solid five minutes. So it wasn't really a question, but more so like, I guess a topic, but tantrums. Patty has already started her tantrums. Girl, she's starting to like hit you or smack something out of your hand if she doesn't want it. Yeah, no, I'm not putting up with any of that. I'm not putting up with the hitting. I'm not putting up with the, her hitting something out of my hand. I'm not putting up with her just screaming bloody murder for no reason at all. I do get mad at her and I do correct her. And now is the time to actually start um, a little bit of disciplining. I know that yes, she's still a baby, but her mind is developing. Normally when she starts like throwing a fit and I'll be like, no, Adeline, don't do that. Or you can't do that. Um, then she like screams bloody murder and I'll try to distract her with something. I'll be like, here, take this toy or here is a snack or here is something or here, go do this. I just started this toddler life. So we'll see how it goes. And hopefully I can give better advice on tantrums later on. So yeah, those are all my questions. In closing this video, I just want to say that I love being a mommy. I love, I love Adeline with all my heart. She has changed my life and I absolutely love it. Mommies, you're not alone. We all struggle. We all go through it. We're not perfect mommies, so it's okay. Now I want to hear your mommy stories. So in the comments below, tell me how mommy life changed you. Say hi, everyone. We are doing her hair because we're about to go. Can I see? Yay. Baby Addie. Say hi, yo. Hi. Aren't these the cutest? They were at Old Navy for five bucks, y'all. And right hey. Hi. Say hello. Hey. Can you see baby? Can you see baby? See, my name is Adeline Lorraine, and I'm one year old. One. Yeah, one. <laughs> she's just, she's mocking us. <gasps> Baby. Yay, yay. We're going to go now. We're going to go bye-bye. We're going to go shopping. Say bye-bye. Mm. Say bye-bye. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel and go ahead and hit the notification button if you want to get notified every time I upload a video. But thanks so much for watching. That's it for Amber's Aspect. I'll see you next week. Bye!